Let's take a look at how we would multiply fractions. So say we had this fraction right here, 2 and 3 quarters times 1 and a half. And we're interested in knowing what is 2 and 3 quarters times 1 and a half. Well, one of the ways we could show this, at least visualize this, is we could make a rectangle. So you remember that area of a rectangle is length times width. So if you want to find the area of something, we would multiply two things together. Well, that's what we have here. We're saying something times something. So we could say that 2 and 3 quarters, let's make that the length of this rectangle, times the width of this rectangle, w. So let's say this is 1 and a half. And the answer, length times width, length times width is equal to the area. So 2 and 3 quarters times 1 and a half will be the area of this rectangle. Well, let's break this side down. So instead of 2 and 3 quarters, why don't we say From here to here, we'll say is 2, and this extra little part over here we'll say is 3 quarters. So this side is 2 and 3 quarters, and then this side here is 1 and a half, so why don't we say all the way to here is 1, and this remaining length is a half. So here my width is one and a half and my length is two and three quarters. So what this has given me is now four rectangles and so this area here I can simply find by going two times one which is two. And this this area here would be well, we know this side here is 3 quarters, and this length here is 1, because it'll be the same length as this. So 1 times 3 quarters is 3 quarters, so this would be the area of this piece. Now if I need to find the area of this rectangle, well, that would be this length here, which is 2, times here. So what is a half? Half of 2. 1 half times 2. Half of 2 is 1. And then we have this side over here, which is 3 quarters, and this side here, which is a half. So what's half of 3 quarters? Well, half of 3 quarters would be 3 eighths. 1 half times 3 quarters, 3 eighths. So the area of my, total area of my uh, rectangle here would equal, say, this area here, 2, plus this area here, 1, plus this area over here, 3 quarters, plus this area over here, 3 eighths. Now you'll remember that when we're finding, that when we're adding up fractions, that we need to make sure we get common denominators. So 2 right now is like 2 over 1, and 1 is 1 over 1. So to get a common denominator, the common denominator here would be 8, because 8 is the smallest number that you can divide each of these numbers into. So to get this as a denominator of 8, we need to multiply the denominator by 8. So 2 over 1 becomes 16 over 8 plus, need to multiply this by 8, and this by 8 is 8 over 8. Here I need to multiply this by 2 to get 8, so this would become a 6. And here I need to multi I don't have to multiply this by anything because it's already over 8. So I would get 16 over 8 plus 8 over 8 plus 6 over 8 plus 3 over 8. 16 plus 8 is 24. 24 plus 6 is 30. 30 plus 3 is 33 eighths would be the area of that rectangle. And if I wanted to write that as a mixed number, 8 goes into 33 uh, four times. And 8 times 4 is 32, so that leaves one eighth left behind. So we can show, we can show that when we're multiplying any fractions that we can make a rectangle up because when we're multiplying something it really means what would the area be. 
length times width equals area. So I make one, two and three quarters, the other side of my rectangle, one and a half, and I can chop it up into different pieces and find the area by adding up, total area by adding up each of the, the four areas that we have here. But that, that's a fair bit of work. Um, so fortunately there is a shortcut method that we can use to multiply fractions so that we don't have to model this all the time with the rectangles. But if somebody asked you why is two and three quarters times one and a half four and one eighth, you should be able to show that. And you'd show that by drawing a rectangle and saying, well, two and three quarters times one and a half becomes four and one eighth because this is what the area, the total area would be when we multiply those two fractions together. But I'll show you now a shortcut method for multiplying fractions. So here's the fraction that we just did. We did, we know that two and three quarters times one and a half is four and one eighth. Let's, let's, um, let's do the shortcut method here and we'll show you that this will also become four and one eighth. The first thing that we must do is we must convert all mixed fractions to improper form. So remember when you have two and three fourths that we can figure this out by going two times, sorry, four times two and then adding three. So four times two is eight, eight plus three is eleven fourths. So two and three fourths is the same thing as eleven fourths in improper form. Um, another way you can do this is two and three fourths. The two is the same thing as eight fourths. So that's eight fourths plus three fourths, which of course is eleven fourths. But probably most of you have gone this times this plus this to get eleven fourths. So two and three quarters is eleven fourths times, this would be two times one, which is two. Two plus one is three, so three over two. Now, when we're multiplying fractions, so after we've converted everything to improper form, when we're multiplying fractions, it's really as simple as multiplying the two denominators, which is eight, and multiplying the two numerators, 11 times three, which is 33. And this would be our final answer. Multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators, and then reduce. If we wanted to write it in mixed form, we would simply say, how many times does 8 go into 33? Oh yeah, 4 times. And that leaves 1 left over, so 4 and 1 eighth, which is the same answer. Now just so you know, you do not need to write your final answer in mixed fraction form. It is okay to leave it in, uh, in improper form as long as your final answer is in lowest terms. So make sure you reduce. Make sure you reduce your answer. Reduce your fractions. So in this case we didn't have to because 33 eighths um, does not reduce. You can't divide 33 and 8 by, by something, something common. So our final answer is 33 eighths. Or if you want to convert it to a mixed form, that's totally fine too, but not necessary. So here's four, four more examples. These ones out. So I have one and two thirds times three fourths. So the first thing we have to do, remember, is convert everything to um, improper form. So mixed, mixed fractions are, are no good when we're working with them. So 3 times 1 is 3, plus 2 is 5. So this first one's going to become 5 thirds times 3 fourths. And now, now that I have a single fraction here in improper form and a single fraction here in improper form, I can multiply my numerators. So 5 times 3 is 15. I can multiply the denominators. 3 times 4 is 12. And then finally I can reduce my fractions. So 15 twelfths, I can divide those both by 3. When I divide that by 3, I get 5. And when I divide that by 3, I get 4. So my final answer is 5 fourths. And it's just fine to leave your fraction in improper form. 
If you wanted to, you could also write this as 4 goes into 5 as once, so 1, and that would leave 1 left over, so 1 and a quarter. Both answers are fine, but this is generally how we would write our final fractions um, in upper level math courses. So improper form is just fine. Looking at this next example here, we got 5 over 2 times 4. So remember when you have a whole number, it really is like a fraction over over 1. So this is really 4 over 1. And this is nice because this was in, in improper form, so we didn't have to do any work to convert that. So now I'm ready to just multiply my numerators, 5 times 4, which is 20, divided by 2 times 1, which is 2. And now I can reduce my fraction. 20 divided by 2 is exactly 10. So my final answer here would be would be 10. Looking at this example here, hmm, a little bit of work to do here first because both of these fractions are in mixed form. So I'll go 3 times 2, which is 6. 6 plus 1 is 7. So 2 and 1 third is the same thing as 7 thirds times 5 times 3 is 15. 15, uh, 15 plus 4 is 19 over 5. And now I'm ready to multiply this together. So 7 times 19 is 133 divided by 3 times 5, which is, which is 15. And we've got uh, 133 divided by 15, and I don't think there's any number. Nope, no, we can't divide 133 or 15 by anything. So this answer is done just like, just like that. Or if we want, we could figure out how many times 15 goes into 133 and write it as a mixed fraction. Um, but that answer is, is totally acceptable. And our final example here, this one's nice because it's already in improper form. So I could just go 5 times 12, which is 60, divided by 4 times 7, which is 28. And whoop, I can see uh, these are both even numbers, so I can divide them both by 2. That puts it down to 30 and puts this down to 14. These are still both even numbers, so I can continue to divide the top and bottom by 2. So I'm down to 15 and finally 7 in the denominator. Now this fraction is in simplest form, so my final answer would be 15 sevenths. So let's review again how we would multiply fractions. So to multiply fractions, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to convert both fractions to improper form. So I do have mixed fractions here. I do have to convert them to improper form. So 3 times 2 plus 1 is 7 thirds times 2 times 1 plus 1 is 3 over 2. So convert both fractions to improper form. Good. Now multiply the numerators, those are the top numbers, so 7 times 3, which is 21. And multiply the denominators, those are the bottom numbers, 3 times 2 is 6. And finally, if need be, I need to reduce my final answer. In this case, I can divide these both by 3. 21 divided by 3 is 7, and 6 divided by 3 is 2. So my final answer would be 7 over 2. And that's how we multiply fractions.